Hello everybody, this is Rage Retro with a update video for Pure SPX. I'm going to do my best not to ramble in this video and to uh, quickly show you in not too long of a video exactly of where I'm at with this patch. So if this layout looks familiar to you, you would be familiar with the SP1200. The SP1200 is a legendary production device. A lot of producers use this in the past for hip hop and lo-fi dance music and that sort of thing. So um, because I don't have the money to purchase one, <laughs> I'm going the long route and trying to reverse engineer the SP1200 from YouTube videos to get a basic understanding of the workflow. So um, again, not going to try to ramble on here, I'm just going to get right into what I uh, want to show you. So what controllers can we be used here? You can see that I have a toggle box here for a keyboard, the keyboard shortcuts, so we can use F, all the F buttons to uh, scroll through the menu, as well as the uh, side selectors here. And also the QWERTY keys will allow us to use this middle menu section. And our pads at the bottom, we could bang those out with the corresponding letters. And in the future, I will be having um, a Arduino configuration patch as long as well as a Raspberry Pi and a MIDI section so we could route all the uh, MIDI say MIDI notes or uh, Ar Arduino or uh, Raspberry Pi pins to these buttons okay so I'm going to quickly describe what these selectors are for um, generally you could select <clears throat> uh, different sections or segments of the song with these selectors. Same with the uh, the sec second selector here. We would be able to change modes. Um, yeah, I'll actually show you this. So basically here we are going to be changing the color and which box is actually selected and this is what that patch looks like. Box meaning the uh, highlighted part wherever whatever state that it's at and that assigns the selector slider why did that say slider but anyways okay so the last selector is for banks and you'll notice that the numbering system is a little bit different than the original sp1200 um, that's basically so that i could use this particular number here inside of a cloned object that would direct me to the specific pad so we can get the start and end positions of our truncated sample. So long story short, the numbering system is a little bit different. But I feel like it's a little bit easier to follow, so there's that. That is a bonus. Okay, uh, where am I here? The sliders are going to be used for your truncating and the multi-pitch and multi-level sections so basically when you're on the menu options 11 or 12 that's what the sliders will be used for such as changing your pitch and obviously the loudness or velocity or well, yeah the loudness of the, the sample that you're currently selected on and on to the display the display was the trickiest part to get working because things have to be cleared out and redrawn and basically for every menu part that uh, that you browse to, this is how those are handled. So you can see that I have kind of compiled some of them into the same thing because the layout is generally the same. The um, best example of how things are being drawn out on <clears throat> the display is right here. So each menu option is pretty much just like this, but this area is generally different. So I will show you another one here, uh, say like for the sample section. See, it's generally the same, but the bottom here is adding different objects and that sort of thing. Uh, okay, uh, what's this, the GUI slider. Uh, what is this for? Oh, this is to make sure that whenever a slider is actually moved 
where we are still in the correct mode. So right now, we don't have access to the sliders because we're in sample mode. So that's what that check does. Uh, okay, uh, that's about it for this, the, the display. And then on to the number pad input section. Uh, this was a little tricky initially because I wasn't sure how to do this section. This was provided by somebody in one of the pure data groups. Saved me so much time, it's unbelievable. I was going the long route by trying to do some stuff and it wasn't, it was super ugly. This is a lot more cleaner. So that is our digit listener. So whenever a command is sent through, the numbers are kind of built up and appended together to uh, send our master command, basically. And that is pretty much that. And so I'm just going to run through some of the menu options here, and then we'll get into a quick little sample demo, <clears throat> and then call it a wrap. But um, we would go to multi-level section, and then as soon as we change the sliders there, we could see update on the display. And the same goes for the multi-pitch. We could do the same thing. Um, and then we would... Uh, exit that mode and then go to like say 14 or something like that 17 18 so on and so forth and most of these commands are not actually coded out currently we're just able to browse through the menu system although the sample section is complete so we are going to make a sample to uh, start things off we would go to assign sample which is command 2 assign voice sorry we would pick a, an out channel hit enter um, we would then <clears throat> go to our input gain push this up to 20 Hit enter to confirm it. We would then set our threshold. Uh, we want the threshold to be low because we want it to come right in as soon as we start record as, as soon as it picks up some sort of sound or something. If you do have a lot of background noise in your studio or wherever you're recording, you would bump, bump this up a little bit. But we'll just keep it at one to ensure that we get something here. So that is our threshold. We would then Go to command five, set our sample length time. We'll go for like five seconds. Uh, this is currently unlimited, though I may cut this down um, to uh, allow like saving space on a Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or any sort of embedded system, depending on how much space that you have to save a sample. And write times are gonna take longer and that sort of thing. So I might bump this up or I might leave it to uh, or sorry, I might limit this to like say 10 seconds or 20 seconds, seeing as how the uh, SP1200 I believe is 5 or 10 seconds, although I can't remember off the top of my head. So uh, we set our sample length, that's good to go, and now we could actually record a sample. So I click 7 to arm, and now I should be recording, I should be recording, check 1, 2, 2. I should be recording okay and now we can set our truncate points for this uh, sample here so we go back to setup and truncate our sample so that's command 19 and we select the pad that we want to uh, assign the truncated sample to and we would then scrub through and find our end position and start position. So the first slider is coarse and the second slider is fine for the start, the fine start, the coarse end, and the fine end. So you can see here that we're getting a much more of an increment and change when we use the first one. Oh, and we have a stack overflow here. Huh. 
Okay, I'm going to have to look into that, so I'm going to leave that there. Um, huh. Now I'm going to be thinking about that. So we would uh, then uh, click enter, like let's say we're fine, we found our sample, click enter, do you want to confirm? Yes. Done sampling, and it brings us back to the main setup section. So now if I click A, we should actually have a sample in here. What? Oh, apologies, I didn't have <laughs> keyboard shortcut selected once again. Arm. And there's our sample that we just made, that we just truncated, apologies. Arm, arm. So I currently don't have it uh, resetting fully. So we can actually hear what I've done in a previous attempt at recording this video, which are these points as well. Arm, arm. Should be recording, should be recording. Now I should, now I should, should be recording, should be recording. Arm, now I should, now I should, now I should, should be recording. Now I should. And you can tell that it's a little bit faster. I think my calculations are off a little bit with the uh, sample rate. I might have put 44 instead of, or 44.1 instead of 41.0 or something like that. And it's just a little Arm. bit fast. Should be recording. Arm. So that's basically how we would truncate a sample and get ready to uh, build out a sample catalog, I guess you would say. And I'm going to have to say that is a wrap on the video. This is currently where I'm at with S, uh, pardon me, pure SPX. And uh, as I said, I'm making progress. I hope you guys liked the video. Didn't want to keep it too long. <laughs> Apologies if I did start to ramble a bit. So again, thank you for your time. Thank you for having an in interest in pure SPX. And I hope I see some feedback in the, in the comment section. Thanks again, it's Reggie Retro. Peace out everybody.